Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dallas with Gadget Hacks, and today I'm gonna to show you 10 things iOS does better than Android. Now I've been an Android user for almost as long as the operating system has existed, and I've never really been tempted to make the switch to iOS. But just this month, I finally got an iPhone to play around with, and it's given me the chance to take a look at both operating systems in a lot more detail. I'll tell you right now that I'm still sticking with Android for the foreseeable future, but after using an iPhone for a couple weeks now, the gap between Android and iOS is a lot more narrow than I initially thought it was. I already covered the 10 things that annoy me about iOS with a separate video, and I'll leave a link to that one in the description. But now it's time to take a look at the things that Apple clearly does better. First up is a minor one, but it adds up fast. On iOS, the system actually knows whether you set a four or a six digit pin, which means that as soon as you enter the right number, your phone automatically unlocks. On Android though, it's almost as if there are no rules. You can set up a pin with however many digits you want, as long as there's four or more. As a result, you have to tap the check mark when you're done entering your pin, which might not seem like much, but for a four digit pin, that's 25% more work every time you unlock your phone. The next up is the app switcher. Apple's version scrolls horizontally, which allows each of the app previews to take up more vertical space. On Android, this same list scrolls vertically, so in portrait mode, you only see a small portion of each app. This minor issue is compounded by the fact that entries in the list persist through a reboot, so it can get cluttered fast, and then it's really hard to find the app you're looking for. Now in my other video, I stated my preference for Android's quick settings menu over Apple's control center. But one thing I didn't mention there is how you can quickly launch a handful of common apps from Control Center, and that's definitely a handy feature. With Android, these quick settings are just settings, and even though there's a workaround that lets you add your own icons to this list, it's a fairly complicated process that few people will actually go through. And this next one is more about the difference between Apple and Google, but it has a big impact on the usability of Android and iOS. You see, Apple products always have a catchy name, and 9 times out of 10, there will be an ad campaign for any new feature that gets added to iOS. That has the byproduct of making iOS features and services more well known, and compared to Google's approach of obscure app names and no advertisement, it gives iOS a clear advantage. Think about it, when you want to make a video call on iOS, you open FaceTime like the commercial told you to do. But if you were doing the same thing with an Android phone, would you know to open Hangouts? Probably not. And with better discoverability, you get more people to use your services. Then with more users, your service becomes more viable. It's as simple as that. The next up is a big one. When Apple flips the switch on a new firmware update, it immediately starts rolling out to all devices across the globe. But on Android, you've got manufacturers like Samsung layering tons of garbage on top of Android. So when Google issues an update, they take months to go back and add all that stuff back in. Even then, the carriers will sit on the update once the manufacturer gets it ready. So there's a six month gap between new Android versions and when most users will actually get them. Now I really like the fact that Android has a back button, especially considering that it's right down here where your thumb should be. But a lot of the content on your screen is still out of reach, or at least dangerously close to the top of the phone. With iOS, instead of doing thumb yoga to reach something near the top, you simply double touch the home button to trigger reachability, then the screen shrinks down to meet you halfway. There's nothing like that on Android, but with today's bigger screens, there absolutely should be. The next iOS advantage is 3D Touch. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that on this older iPhone, but it's a really big advantage. As it stands, we're very limited in the ways that we can interact with our devices, so adding software support for a screen that responds to the amount of force you're applying is a huge win for users. It looks like Google is working on a similar feature for the next version of Android, but there's no telling how well it'll work, and it's important to note that Apple was the one to push the envelope on this front. Now here's another thing that I can't exactly show you because my SIM card is still tied to an Android device, but Apple's iMessage is one of the best communication methods on any smartphone. It seamlessly integrates with your existing phone number, then adds rich, high-tech features to your messages. You can see when the other person read your message, attach bigger files, and even continue conversations from your Mac. With Android, however, you only have two choices. Either use SMS, which is a standard that was created in the early 1980s, or try to convince your friends to use a better messaging platform like WhatsApp or Hangouts. Good luck with that. Then this next one is something Android users have been bragging about for years. If you're rooted, or if you're willing to set up complicated VPN services, you can actually block ads on Android. 
But just recently, Apple added a new content blockers feature to Safari, and now that argument favors iOS. All you have to do with this one is just install a content blocking app, then enable it in settings. In the end, you'll never see another ad on the web again, and the process is 10 times easier than it is on Android. Finally, I have to address what is possibly the biggest advantage iOS holds over Android. App developers are definitely quicker to release their wares for iPhones, and it's something we've seen time and time again. There's a few reasons behind this, and none of them are likely to change anytime soon. First, studies show that iOS users spend twice as much money on apps as their Android counterparts, so there's definitely a financial incentive to publish apps on iOS first. Then secondly, Android devices come with thousands of unique display sizes, which means it's a lot harder to make sure your apps are compatible with every device. And finally, Apple's coding language for iOS is more modern and flexible than the one developers have to use for Android. This is mostly the result of Google being tied up in a lawsuit over the use of Java-based code, so it would take a miracle to see any changes on that front soon. All in all, iOS definitely has its advantages over Android, but are they enough to make you consider making the switch? Personally, I prefer Android's openness, and it has advantages of its own, so I'll be sticking with my Nexus for the time being. Either way, I went over each of these issues in a lot more detail in my full article on Gadget Hacks, so be sure to check that out if you don't mind. As always though, we'd appreciate it if you would like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. So we'll see you again next time folks, but until then, happy gadget hacking.